So <coughs> we'll complete the supervised learning understanding. So now we are with uh, supervised learning, and uh, this this we have a lot of examples. I'll make it very simple for you to understand. Okay. So we have a supervised learning. So these are some of the sets of rules you have to follow. Okay. So before uh, we move on to this, uh, I would say data science is a pre-step of activities. Okay. You have to approach the algorithm in that particular format way only. You have to model the data in that particular way only. Okay. So it is a step of rules. It's similar like if you write a program, you have to approach functions like this only. That's the, that's how we have to do it. So when you understand all those things and the set of rules to be followed, then it's easy for you to apply uh, the kind of uh, outcome of a data to the model and you can interpret out of it. Okay. So that is our main things. Okay. So because right now we'll be seeing certain steps. So you have to do this is how for getting uh, the output. It is the predefined ways the formula will be working and the model will, work, will be working. So those things will be following from now, now on. And the, some of the ratios also fixed. We can change it. We can tweak. We can change it. But the better fit is some of the ratios. So we'll be seeing all those things. So if you have any question on that, get it clarified. So supervised learning is one of the important aspects for data science, where around 75% of work will be supervised learning only. Remaining 25% only unsupervised and uh, recommendations, all those things. Most of the work will be supervised learning only. So now we have a historical data. So we have seen another two important uh, things yesterday, so which I have uh, covered, but it may not be present in the PPT, okay? So something with uh, the independent variable and dependent variables, okay? So whenever a variable that is a target variable is going to be a dependent variable and the prediction that is the features is going to be it's also called as a predictor variable and as well as the independent variable okay predictors are the independent variables where there are a lot of terms which will be given to the independent and dependent variables so first one we call the dependent variable which is also called as class label target variable okay outcome and the variable what you want to predict response all those called as a dependent variable. When we say independent variable, okay, we see as an input or predictor variable or features. So which also means the variable you use it for making prediction. Okay, the variable you use it for prediction. So this one is going to be the variable what you want to predict. So that's the difference. So whenever you have the two things, it's going to be in supervised learning. Only when you have an uh, independent variable where you don't have a history recorded, then it's going to be an unsupervised learning. These are the two things. So now with that understanding, we have a history data set. Okay, can anyone say? Uh, the supervised learning will have a only independent variable. That is my statement. Is it right or wrong? Supervised learning will have only an independent variable. So it will have both independent and the dependent variable. That's a target variable and predictor variable will be there. That is called the supervised learning. So now with the history data which is having two things, what I do is like I do a random sampling. What are the purpose of random sampling? So from now on, as I said, we'll be following certain terminologies and certain set of rules. That is a that is how we have to do the modeling. Okay. So in this random sampling, randomly I pick 70% of records and some 30% of records. 70% of record I'm going to train the brain. When I say train the brain, train the machine learning with the data. 
and always ensure the data should be a generalization of a data. It should not be a specific data. Once you train the modeling, once you train the system, it is going to give you a model. When it's a model, it's going to be giving a sort of understanding it has made from the data. Certain formulas and calculations will be the output of the modeling. So now I have to evaluate my brain, whether the brain is working fine or not. So what I do is like, I already have a 30% of a data as a testing data, so which will have an input and output already, but when you give that to the model, it will take only that predictor variable, that is an independent variable, and it calculates and gives you the output, okay? So the model will give an output, already you know the actual output, so you are going to compare what is the brain predicted output and as well as the actual value was a predicted value. So you will be getting an accuracy of percentage what level of model percentage is, what level of brain uh, works better, what is the percentage of accuracy. So that you will be calculating out of it. So usually it will be around 80 percentage. So none of the model in real world cannot be under percentage and 99-98 percentage will be only applicable to the percentage of accuracy in the healthcare industry. Other retail industry or 75 percentage also is fine, okay? The model accuracy is 75 or 80 percent also it's fine. Predefined steps, you have to sample the data, take 70 percentage and 30 percentage, okay? 70 percentage and 30 percentage. Train the model with 70 percentage and test the model with the 30 percent of data, get the accuracy. How do I get more accuracy? More accuracy is like how much you are generalizing the data and converting the data to train a brain, to train a brain, okay? In that case, you will, you will get better accuracy, okay? So for example, as much as you give information to my brain, I can program very well. If I give less information to my brain and if you ask me to write a rocket science, I cannot do that. Okay. Similarly, how much your data is generic, Okay. how much you are training the data. For example, here I am having a kind of a prediction for So the outcome of a prediction is win deal, loss deal, okay? So this is my training set. Target variable output. And where what you are going to test the testing what your actual will be so for example no deal so this is what you want to this is the actual value so if you give this to the training if you give this to the testing as a data set to this model outcome obviously it will say something win or loss but that is wrong so while the training and the testing set should be of similar data sets, okay? You should not have a different data sets altogether. And as well, the training and the testing set, set should always follow the same set of columns, same set of uh, rules of transformation, and uh, what are the future incoming data you want to predict as well, should all follow the same set of transformation, same set of data cleaning. All the things should be same. And as well as, how well the generalization of data we are going to make. For example, I have a age as a factor, for example, uh, 23, 24, 26, 35, 67, 87, 95. So this is the age I have in my data set. So if you give to the system, it will all assume as 24, 26 are individual numbers. Rather than if you give age category, 
between 24 and 50 say medium age people this is also medium medium and 50 to 90 old people So if this model says accuracy is 70 percent means this will give 90 percent accuracy. Is that clear? So as I know. So how well you are making the data generates that matters which brings you more accuracy. Okay. Okay. Fine. Let me put it like this. So this is your current data, fine uh, Sundar, 24, uh, 26, 35, 67, 87, 95. Now I am doing the modeling and I get accuracy of 74%, okay. What on a path, how do I get uh, the accuracy mode? So what I do is like, if this is a data is a generalized, no, it is a number, which is unique numbers, okay. So now what I do is like I go and create an another variable called age category and then what I do is like I then categorize the age. Anything between 25 to 50 is a medium age. So this will fall under medium and then so also for medium, medium and anything above 50 will be old people. So what I do is like I will not input this column to my modeling, rather I will give an input of this model, this data to the modeling. So definitely this will bring around 90 percentage of accuracy. Clear? How will you are treating the data? I'm making more generalized. I am making more generalized. I am not going to give this to my model. I will give this input as a to my model. It's only for explanation. Okay? For example, if you arrive 75 percentage with this column, if you change the same data into an another form, you will get good results. Okay, so we will see that. So, accuracy can be improved through clustering classification of the random sampling. Not clustering, only treatment of a data will bring you more accuracy. Okay, clustering will not come into the picture. What kind of model in the healthcare industry, just to curious to know, we will be seeing that, okay. So any, the same model you can apply to the healthcare industry data as well. So there is no specific models as such, the same model you can apply for healthcare industry, but the treatment of data should be very much high and to get the better accuracy, because in healthcare industry if you are predicting anything should be perfect. But when we generalize some values, it is just going to dilute the accuracy. No. What is the purpose of machine learning? We want to train a machine. Better you train the machine, then only you can get a better results, right? Okay. This data set is going to be same, but I will not use this for training the model. More you generalize the data and train it, more accuracy you will get it. Okay. What will be the accuracy? What is the prediction you have to do it? Okay. Between the ranges, if anything falls, it should be this case. If anything falls between this range, this should be the case. So in that medium, you have to generalize the data and then only you have to give to the model. So in this case, the target variable can be anything. No, this is not an example. Uh, wait, Arun, uh, we'll be seeing the example for a few minutes. Okay. We'll see the example, then we'll come back to this, okay. So what I was explaining is only treatment of data. It's not an example. We'll come back to the example, then we'll see it. Fine, Arun. So what all I'm explaining is how to treat the data, convert from one form to another form, that's all. So we'll see the example. That's, that is not an example, okay. So that's how you calculate the accuracy. So now, if you look at here, whenever after you get the model, we have a new data and we already have the model which is built from the previous training and testing set. We know this is the model is best suit for production. 
So the new data will be coming only with the, I am saying, the new data will be coming both with independent and dependent variable. Is it right or wrong? New data, future prediction data will be coming with both independent and dependent variable. Is it right or wrong? Okay, excellent. It will be having only independent variable. Only independent variable only. So as, okay. Because we have to predict the dependent variable. For the new data, we will not have the dependent variable. It will have only the independent variable. The prediction will do by the model only. That only you will be using it for decision making. So this is how the supervised learning works. So just to understand what is the process of supervised learning. How will we adopt the supervised learning by using the model? We'll see now with an examples. Okay. Is it clear how our supervised learning works? So once again, I'm explaining. You do a random sampling of from a huge volume of data. 70% used for training the brain. The training the brain is equal to giving to the machine learning for a machine to learn by itself. Okay, and then we have a statistic modeling that will be the output of the learning which is done by the machine learning. Okay, and this 30 percentage you are going to feed for a testing the model accuracy. So already you know the actual outcome of a dependent variable and as well as the model will give you the predicted result set. With model and the predicted, uh, model predicted and the actual result you can compare what is the percentage accuracy of the model. If the accuracy is above 70 or 75 percentage, you can take that for the production and deploy into the production. So whenever you new data comes, that will have only the independent variable, will not have the dependent variable. So you will be predicting the dependent variable, right? Is the process of supervised learning is clear? Let me know if anything is unclear. Domain knowledge required for random sampling, are there any techniques? Random knowledge uh, sampling not required any techniques, okay? It's a simple command in R which will give you a random data. Randomly pick any data 70 percentage. Under data means pick 70 records anything. Pick 30 records anything. That's called random sampling. Thanks on that.